Hello and welcome. I welcome you to this wonderful topic as well as we continue with the age of enlightenment, uh, the age of European awakening, uh, the period of European awakening. During uh, uh, this period, you know, in this period of uh, European awakening, we have looked at a number of topics, just as you can see. We looked at the uh, Renaissance, uh, Reformation, uh, Enlightenment, all those uh, were within uh, within the uh, period or the age of Enlightenment, or the age of European awakening. So one of another aspect, another important aspect is the topic that we are going to look at now. And this is the Industrial Revolution. So on the Industrial Revolution, we are going to look at a lot of things, a lot of things. By the way, we will be mentioning or will be centering much in Europe and specifically in, uh, in England. Uh, so we'll be mentioning why it started in England and uh, what, uh, who were the people, uh, the uh, contributors, the first people to contribute into the Industrial Revolution. And what did they, uh, the remarkable contributions, what did they make? Uh, what were the things that they contribute uh, to this uh, Industrial Revolution? So we are going to look at a lot of those things and uh, what are the impact or the effects of those machines or those things, inventions which uh, they brought in or that changed the world. So what were the effects even up to uh, this day? So we are going to enjoy a lot of things because some of the things that we are going to mention them, we are going to wonder to say, oh, 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 this gentleman is the one who studied this thing. So uh, it will really come to our knowledge uh, on this far. So uh, let us be together. Let us walk through together up to the end because this one, it is a wonderful topic. Uh, we are going to see how people started to change the world. We talk of the tarmac today. We uh, we travel using the, the, the tarmac road. There was someone who studied that one they are the people that we are going to mention or that we are going to study in this lesson we talk of cars today people travel in cars in aeroplanes they are the people that we are going to talk about to say who are the people who studied these things so let us be together on this wonderful topic so industrial revolution uh, when we talk of industrial revolution uh, was a big change from domestic system of production to factory system of production. So when we just say uh, industrial revolution, we mean uh, production now. Uh, production uh, using uh, or domestic system of product, uh, production or producing things or making things to factory system of making things. So that is uh, what should have in your mind to say, all right, when we talk of uh, industrial revolution, uh, we mean the change from domestic making of things to industrial making of things. So industrial uh, revolution uh, was the start of making large quantities of goods using machines in factories. So this was the beginning of mass production of things in factories. So uh, this is what is called mass production now. So the, this involved the change from handwork to machine work. So it involved the change whereby people now were not uh, using manual to, uh, to do things. They started using the machines which they invented. So before the Industrial Revolution started, farming was the main occupation in Europe. So just as it is here in Malawi, you know, our major activity is farming. So even in Europe, farming was the major thing. And also items such as cloths, tools, implements were made by hand for domestic use. So those tools that they were using on day to day, they were also made by hand. So towns uh, were small, 
and and developed with very little manu uh, activity of manufacturing so they were very very small towns eh, and eh, uh, manufacturing was eh, done at a low level so here we are going to talk about the uh, reasons why industrial revolution started in england or in britain so industrial revolution mass production started in england or it started in uh, in uh, britain so what were the reasons so there were several reasons why it started uh, in britain or in england as compared to other countries number one is trade because of trade trade helped uh, in settling industrial revolution in uh, in England for a number of ways. So we are saying that it started in England, number one, because of trade. So here we are going to explain how trade, how trade uh, contributed to the beginning of industrial revolution in England. So number one, Britain depended on international trade for its wealth. So this gave an incentive to produce more goods for export. So here we are saying that uh, Britain uh, depended on international trade. The British were, we can say, we are almost the first people to dominate even uh, the far areas from their country. As such, they dominated those areas because they wanted uh, to trade, they were trading with them. So that is what we call international trade. So that's why we said they were for international trade and they depended on that international trade for their uh, wealth. So that one, it was like an incentive. It was like an attractive thing to produce more uh, things for export because they already had the market. So with the market available, then uh, they uh, wanted to embark on producing more so that they export to other countries. Due to, or number two under trade is uh, due to trade, England had many wealthy merchants who were able to invest in expensive machinery. So because of trade, trade in Britain uh, was done by the merchants. By the merchants, we mean the big business people. So Britain had a lot of big business people. So those people, they were willing to invest on the machinery that could produce more so that they export more. So with that, England was on the lead. Number two uh, is natural resources. Apart from trade, natural resources in England. So England had coal and iron ore reserves, which made it easier to manufacture machines and build factories. So there were uh, reserves of iron ore and coal, and they were able uh, to uh, manufacture the machines and uh, build the factories. Number three is cheap transport. England as an island, it had cheap transport for both importing and exporting uh, goods. So England, you know Britain is like an island. Now, being an island, uh, they need, in order to keep in touch with other areas, they need to have constant transport, transport that is water transport, and that transport was cheaper. So as a result, uh, it resulted that with this cheap transport, uh, it had cheap transport uh, in both exporting and importing uh, the goods. So England had village industries. Apart from that, we are saying that in, uh, England had village industries. So the existence of cottage industries uh, laid the foundation for uh, the revolution. So there were many uh, village industries or they were producing uh, at a small scale in small villages in different areas. So when we say cottage industries, uh, we refer to a system of production where goods and services are produced at home in small amounts. So that is cottage industry. Next is the stability. Stability is another reason why it started in England. England uh, had stable political systems since there were no struggles for political uh, power. So Britain or uh, England followed the monarchy and there, is, there was no uh, political uh, struggles to say uh, or maybe rebellion or by others. No, they are all under the monarchy. And being an island, 
England was also relatively safe from the attacks by enemies. So this meant that people could devote all their time to economic development. So as an island, it means that they were isolated uh, from maybe our external attacks. As a result, people were free. They could easily uh, uh, embark on economic development. Another reason was the, the new scientific ideas, the new scientific ideas. Britain was one of the countries where new scientific idea, ideas had taken the deepest roots. So this growth in new scientific ideas led to the various technological advancement. So what we are saying here is that uh, new scientific ideas also developed in, uh, in Britain. As a result, uh, it enhanced it supported the uh, technological development, such as the development of factories or machines that could enable them to do uh, things uh, uh, better and quicker. And also colonies, because of colonies. Britain established colonies in North America and Caribbean, which created market for the manufactured goods. So if you can, uh, you can uh, you can relate to the first point of trade, it goes the same here. We are saying that uh, Britain had colonies in North America. So with that, the North American and the Caribbean, they were under, under Britain. So even today's United States, all that area, it was under Britain. As a result, uh, they were able, able uh, manufacturing their goods, uh, make, uh, being sure that the market is already, is already there. So with that then, uh, uh, industrial revolution started in Britain or in England. Apart from that, also freedom of movement, freedom of movement. People in England were free to move about in search of work, unlike other places in Europe, where serfdom and feudalism still survived. So this meant that uh, uh, once factories were established, there was no shortage of labor. So uh, we are saying that there was freedom of movement there. So in other countries in Europe, uh, they practice much of feudalism was there, the system whereby a few people were owning land and others were tenants on that land. So uh, wherever you could go, you could just become a, a tenant. Unlike in England, people were free to move in other places to seek for work, to look for work. Therefore, uh, when factories started now, there was no shortage of labor because movement was not restricted. Another factor, another factor was the high population, high population. So there was high population in Britain, which uh, provided a lady source of labor to the men, uh, to uh, the industry, to the industry that were there. So uh, high population was there again in England. Uh, with that then, it provided the lady source of labor to the industries. And also prosperity. Prosperity also contributed to the beginning of industrial revolution in England. Britain was prosperous, a prosperous nation with a high standard of living. So with the available wealth, rich merchants in Britain were able to invest in industries and buildings. So as we have already said that there were uh, rich merchants there, so you can even link to it to say those people, they were wealthy. And that wealthy, it means that it was flourishing in Britain. As a result, um, they were able to invest much in buildings as well as in industries. And also strong navy, the strong navy. England had a strong navy, had a strong navy which offered protection for her uh, missions along the trade routes. So uh, there was that army, the strong army was there that could uh, protect the traders as they were moving. So here we are going to look at the important inventors and their innovations or inventions so who were the people uh, who did uh, who founded some of the things so number one here we are talking of jonas 
Johannes Gutenberg. Johannes Gutenberg was there between 1398 and 1468. So John Gutenberg, he invented the printing press. He invented the printing press in 1455. Now, what was the impact of his invention or this printing press? Number one, many books were made within a short period of time. The printing press, we mean like a big printing machine. So many books were being printed within a short period of time. And also, facil uh, it facilitated the spread of uh, the Renaissance ideas, the rebirth of learning. Books became cheaper and portable, and this allowed the spread of knowledge and helped create more educated literary and literate public. So books were made and they were available and knowledge spread, which made many people to be educated and able to read and write. Also, there was demand for education because everyone wanted to spread, uh, to read for themselves. So uh, it facilitated education because people, they wanted to read for themselves. And the uh, rise of, uh, rise of early nationalism uh, in Europe as many books became available in uh, European vernacular languages to, uh, to detriment or uh, to the detriment or damage or the loss of the Latin status as the official language. Remember, before uh, most of the books or, or many books were there, uh, the only official language was the Latin just as it was the Roman Empire. So uh, we say to it that after the invention of the printing press, people now uh, started to uh, print their books in vernacular languages. As a result, the Latin language went down. Another one was James Watt, James Watt. So James Watt was a Scottish inventor. He was a Scottish inventor and he invented the steam engine the steam engine. So it developed uh, the development of uh, the steam power stimulated the demand for uh, for two raw materials. Number one, it was coal to produce fuel uh, for the steam engine, and again iron to build the machines. So James Watt developed the steam engine. So with that development of uh, that steam engine, it meant that now the raw materials that were needed to develop that engine were coal in order to provide power for the engine and again uh, iron in order to build the engine itself so you mean uh, you see there uh, by that idea of the steam engine it also facilitated the need of coal much coal and much iron uh, iron to uh, to support that invention the other one was uh, Richard Ockwright. Richard Ockwright. He invented another spinning uh, machine called the water frame in 1769. So this machine was used. Uh, uh, this machine used water power rather than human power. So he invented the uh, spinning machine. So with that, then uh, he was using the uh, the water power than the human power. Another inventor was John Kay. John Kay was another inventor. He invented the flying shuttle. The flying shuttle in 17, uh, the 1733. So the shuttle saved uh, the weaver from trouble of having to pass the shuttle from hand to hand. So here we are talking of the weaving machine. So this one, it was the uh, flying shuttle. So we are saying that it eased the work from those weavers, the people who were uh, working in the uh, textile industry. So with the flying shuttle, the weaver could spin greater uh, length of cloth uh, within a short period of time. So we say to it that uh, when they were using uh, the uh, flying uh, shuttle, uh, then the spinning itself, the making of cloth was done quickly than uh, before.
Now let us look at the changes. What were the changes that were brought by the industrial uh, revolution in uh, different industries or in various uh, industries and their impact on society? So what were the changes that the uh, industrial revolution uh, brought? Or what or where in which industries in which sector and what was the impact so let's begin with this uh, that is uh, in agriculture now in agriculture uh, here uh, what happened or some of the machines that were invented in the field of agriculture were the seed drills the threshing machines the combined harvesters the milking machines and the cream separators those were some of the machines. So among the area farmers who experimented with the new ideas were a number of them. So uh, some of them who experimented to bring out the machines that brought out change in agriculture were such as Jethro II. Jethro II uh, is, was uh, one of them. So he invented a seed drill. He invented a seed drill that was used in sowing uh, the seeds evenly in the fall, that is in a hole into a ridge. So he invented the seed drill that was uh, planting the seed at, uh, at uh, the, same, uh, the same spacing like that. So this replaced the old method of broadcasting by hand uh, where seeds were planted on the surface and making them vulnerable to be eaten by animals or blown away by uh, the wind or water like that. So Jethro too he invented what was called the seed drill. So take note of that. Jethro too the seed drill. Another one was the Lord Townshend. The uh, Lord Townshend. Lord Townshend. He introduced a four-year crop rotation system which involved rotating wheat, barley, clover, and turnip. So uh, this one, he, he developed a system of crop rotation that you learn in agriculture even today. So it all started with a Lord Townshend. So he was the one who introduced the crop rotation. And also the other one was Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook. He improved the quality of soil by mixing the light sand soil with clay substance called the marl. He mixed the clay soil with the marl in order to make it into a rich or fertile soil. So he improved the soil fertility. You can see to it that it is it was just like the beginning of fertilizer there, Thomas Cook. And again, uh, Robert Beckwell. Robert Beckwell. He experimented in the breeding of cattle and sheep. So he selected the best animals for breeding and came up with the improved livestock that were resistant to diseases. So we see uh, Robert Beckwell, he was there on breeding of cattle and sheep, whereby he was selecting the best so that they met and they produced the best that were uh, to resist or withstand the diseases. Now we have looked at a few. There were many, not only those people that we have looked at were the only ones in England. No, there were many who uh, brought about change in agriculture, who experimented much on agriculture so that they improve. But then, what were the results of mechanization in agriculture? Number one was that more food could be produced by fewer labor. So what happened was that it could not just, it didn't need everyone to be a farmer in order uh, to produce much food. No, very few uh, were uh, producing for many. So you can see uh, it was uh, a very, very positive thing there. Other than here, uh, what we do is uh, when the rains come, everyone wants to be a farmer. Those who work in offices, they are the bosses, they would like to be farmers. Those who are in the villages, they would like to be farmers. But then, uh, look at what was happening here, was that uh, they were using mechanics, mechanization. As a result, uh, they were uh, growing large, large areas that could produce more food for everyone. So with that, it was easy. It was easy. Life was easy like that. And also it led to the rural unemployment. Rural unemployment. It was 
a negative on the other side because uh, things were done by uh, the machines. So people, they had no work. And also the new system of breeding cattle and sheep led to the availability of sheep, uh, cheap meat and milk in all seasons. So this improved the diet and eventually improving the health of uh, the people. So we see to it that uh, with the improvement of uh, the breeding in cattle and sheep, it led that they had the best meat, cheap meat, and milk again was available throughout the year. Unlike maybe what we are still uh, doing here in Ma, you find that ah that one has a has a has a sheep or has has a cattle for milk. Then they do it manually each and every day, going round selling uh, uh, in buckets. No, they improved, our friends, they improved long, long time ago, and the milk was there throughout the year. So uh, we see our friends, they improved that one. And also it led to the increase, increase in the rate of urbanization, because people, they flock to towns and cities to seek jobs. So it led uh, to the increase in the rate of urbanization. Where urbanization, it means people now living in the urban areas, people migrating to uh, the urban areas, many people flocking to towns. And also land for agriculture was redemarcated into small fenced fields which belonged to individual farmers. So land was leased and fenced uh, by the rich while the poor lost their land due to failure to lease it. So there was a system of leasing the land to sell right. People started to uh, demarcate their land and they were no, it was known maybe by the government to sell right this land belongs to this individual. And also large estates were created by the rich, the rich owners. So uh, the rich owners, they embarked on large estates and they were using the machines to cultivate in those areas. So things really improved in that way. Now we have looked at changes that were there in agriculture. Now let us look at the changes that were there in the transportation and uh, communication. Transportation and communication. So because we have talked of transportation and communication, let's start with the changes in transportation. So here we are going to talk of James Watt. We already mentioned of James Watt. Here we are going to talk about the details about him. So he was the Scottish, a Scottish inventor. He was from Scotland. People from Scotland are called the Scottish. So he was from Scotland, a Scottish inventor. He was someone from uh, Scotland. So he invented the, uh, the steam engine. So he was the one who founded, who started making the steam engine. So the steam engine was a device which previously uh, used coal to boil uh, water. Uh, that in turn produced the steam that set the gears in the machine in motion. So he produced the uh, steam engine that first was using coal to boil the water. So the water was, uh, you know, the water, when you, um, you boil the water, they, it produces the steam. So that steam, it was used to change the gears of the machine because that steam is very powerful. For example, when you take, uh, you, you are boiling the water, you cover it, you seal it. You find that when it is, it is boiling, it is like bumping, bumping like that. So that, uh, that's what uh, James Watt wanted. That power, that force, that bumps when uh, the water boils, says, oh, this one is very powerful. This one is very powerful. Then uh, it can change the, the gears. Then the machine could roll out. So that's what uh, James Watt did. He saw the power in the water or in the steam. So the development of the steam power stimulated the demand of two raw materials we uh, mentioned, coal and iron to build uh, the machines and to uh, provide power. So the introduction of uh, locomotives now. So let us look at the introduction of uh, the locomotives because we are looking at the, uh, the engine here. So in 1901, Richard Trevithick fixed James Watt's engine on a frame 
uh, fixed with uh, wheels. So the steam engine could uh, now drive the uh, machine now called a uh, locomotive. So we are saying that this steam engine could now drive the machine now called the locomotive. So it operated on roads, on roads. So what happened, we are saying that Richard now, in 1801, he took that machine, that where uh, James Watt machine was just moving at the same place or driving other things at the same place, the same machine. So what happened was that Richard in 19, 1801, he got that machine and put it on a frame and put the wheels and that machine now could move on the road and it was the beginning of the cars now that we talk about. So in 1804, another locomotive that operated on the rails was introduced. So another one again, I took the same James Watt machine and put it on the railway and it was also uh, moving. So it was the beginning of the train there. So William uh, Symington fixed the steam engine on boats to operate on waterways. So another one again took that James Watt machine and put it on the frame on, uh, on the uh, frame on the waters and it could drive on the waters. That was the beginning now of boats or the ships now. So we see to it that uh, industrial revolution. Now the first railway line was opened in 1825 between Stock, uh, Stockton and Darlington in England there. And in 1830, George Stephenson, Stephenson used the railway to drive steam locomotive called the rocket, the rocket. So the first uh, train was called the rocket, which operated between Liverpool and Manchester. Uh, between Liverpool and Manchester, uh, there was a train called a rocket there. So this marked the beginning of national railway transport in England. So when we talk of uh, revolution, it starts with one person, just as you can see here. James Watt started the engine and he, he did not have that idea to say, all right, I'm going to use this engine to travel on roads. But it was the other guy, the other person who came in to say, all right, oh, there's this engine. What if we take this engine and put it on the frame and put the wheels, then it drives along. Then it happened. The other one put it on the water. The other one put it on the rocket, that is the railway. Then that is what we call revolution. One man starts, the other people, they continue with that one. Now let's look at road improvement, road improvement. So there were two, there were two ways of improving road transport. Number one was to make better vehicles and to improve road surfaces. So two major improvements were needed. Now, now that they had the machines that could roll on the surface of the, the land, they needed to pave clear roads for that machine. And they could also, they also needed the better machine to improve that machine. So Thomas Telford constructed uh, good roads in Scotland and England. So uh, it was Thomas Telford now who started constructing good roads for that machine now to move on. And again, for uh, there was John Metcalf. He planned roads in the industrial regions of Yorkshire and Lancashire. So uh, this John Metcalf, now he planned roads now to say, now we need to have roads connecting to where we produce these things. And there was John McAdams. John McAdams, he used stones broken into smaller leg size to form a hard smooth road surface. So when tar was invented during the 20th century, it was applied on the fine stone surfaces on the road. So these roads are now known as the tar macadamize, macadamize roads. So or they are called the tarmac roads, named in honor of John McAdams. So when we talk of tarmac, it means tar macadamized. Why? Because John McAdams, he brought, uh, he invented a system whereby they were breaking rocks into smaller particles and uh, spreading them on the uh, surface of the, the, the road there. But later on, they introduced tar, 
they mixed those small rocks with the tar and uh, it is called now the tarmac road so why tarmac mac meaning mac adams mac adams so up to now everywhere in each and every country we have a tarmac road after mac adams so we see to it how uh, things are uh, revolved how industrial uh, uh, revo revolutionized was revolutionized in the passage of time now let's look at the roads what were the improvements what were the results what were the results on the roads improvement number one it improved the roads the improved roads enabled vehicles to travel faster so as you can see if you compare when you are traveling on the uh, tarmac road and the earth road you find that when you are traveling on the uh, tarmac road you move faster that's why you find that someone can move from kalonga and uh, Kalonga to Blantyre just within one day he starts in the morning uh, by evening he is in Blantyre like that so why because you travel on the tarmac road so uh, in the same way if you make it an earth road dust road you find that movement may be a problem and also bigger wagons carrying more goods were introduced so with good roads with uh, good machines on the road now bigger wagons now they were they were carried at first when people were working maybe in gold mines whatever they were carrying by uh, by head or shoulders carrying from one place to the other or they were using the animals but with the invention of the machine we see here now those bigger wagons they could just be carried at once using the rocket using uh, the boats using uh, the cars the locomotives that were there and also it improved the vehicles where uh, or improved vehicles were introduced so when james watt introduced the engines and the other one or richard introduced it into the engine into the frame then people now started to improve the frame the same engine now improving the frame like that so just as it is today uh, people uh, they just improve the frame the appearance of the car so improved vehicles were introduced and traveling traveling became faster people now started to travel uh, very long distances because you are just sitting on the machine and it is traveling it means that you are going to travel faster without being uh, uh, getting tired so as a result uh, people's lives improved canals were also improved uh, in in the uh, transport and communication so let's look at the canals canals were used to transport heavy goods such as coal and uh, iron so they were using the canals so the canals uh, we mean uh, the channels the water the water uh, channels so the first canal was built uh, by duke of bridgewater and his engineer was james brindley so they uh, they built uh, the first canal so the canal linked the cities of Manchester, Liverpool, Lancashire, Birmingham, who and uh, London and Bristol. So you can see that uh, one canal uh, connecting so many so many cities. So it was really something that needed engineering or serious engineering. We talk of a canal like a water stream uh, connecting uh, connecting places places like. Uh, uh, we talk of Lirongwe being connected to Blantyre, being connected to other cities. And again in 1869, in 1869, the Suez Canal, the Suez Canal was built, linking Africa, Asia, and Europe through uh, Egypt, uh, through Egypt. So it is 160 kilometers long. So you know, the Suez Canal is somewhere somewhere in egypt there it is linking three continents europe asia and africa so there uh, it made it easier because it is uh, like uh, like this uh, we have africa africa is uh, just like this africa uh -huh. this is uh, the red sea so that's where we have the egypt egypt is uh, here yeah now the swiss canal when we talk of the uh, the Suez Canal is uh, somewhere here. Uh, it is somewhere here. 
that's where we have the Suez Canal here. Yeah. So it links uh, the Mediterranean Sea, which is here. Uh, there's the Mediterranean Sea, and here the, the Red Sea. So beyond the Mediterranean Sea, you know, it's uh, Europe, which is here. And here there is Asia here, and our Africa is here. So at first, like in Britain, people were traveling all the way this side, this side, or this side to Asia. So with the, uh, the, uh, the opening of this Suez Canal, it meant that their ships now, their boats now were just going uh, through the Suez Canal. They were just passing through uh, the Suez Canal here uh, up to uh, Red Sea, then they could proceed to Asia. So uh, it connected those three, uh, those three uh, or continents. Now, what are the advantages of the canals? They provided the uh, shortest distance between places, just as we have mentioned of the uh, Suez Canal. And they could transport heavier goods than the road. So in water, water transport carries more, more heavier goods than on the road transport. That's why you find that the goods from far away, we talk of cars, when they come from outside, uh, like from Japan to Malawi, they travel by the water transport, the ship. They travel all the way to Dar es Salaam, then there, uh, that's where they are offloaded and now they come to Malawi. And even oil, oil that we are using, they are carried by the tankers, uh, the water tankers, the ship that carry uh, that, uh, that one from Asia there. Then they come all the way uh, from there, to Dar es Salaam, then our cars, our, our trucks, they go there to pick them in the tankers as well. So changes, let's look at the changes in communication. We are looking at the transport, now let's look at the communication. Electric telegraph is the thing that we are going to start with. It was invented in 1844 by Samuel Morse. Samuel Morse was the one who invented the telegraph. And he linked the cities of Baltimore and Washington in the USA. So we see to it that uh, the telegraph was invented in USA and it linked uh, Baltimore and Washington. So by 1866, it managed to connect Britain and America through the transatlantic cable. So they put a cable, you can imagine, people are serious. Life needs to be, uh, to be taken seriously they put a cable from USA, a cable from USA, from America to Britain, a line, just as it is today, we have the cable, uh, the cable, the internet cable, the fiber cable that connects all continents, all places, all places. It is one cable, it runs, it connects all, almost all, this, that cable. Now, but here we are saying that uh, in 1866, way back, they put that cable that connected Europe and, uh, and USA. In 1876, Alexander Bell, Alexander Bell invented the telephone. So Alexander Bell invented the telephone in 1876. Another thing on communication is the radio. Radio was invented in 1896 by Italian scientist by the name Guglielmo, Guglielmo Macaroni, Guglielmo Macaroni. It was a wireless telegraph. It was a wireless telegraph. So uh, he invented the radio. What about the aeroplane? The aeroplane, it was first made by the two American brothers. The brothers, uh, uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright. Orville and Wilbur Wright. So those brothers, in 1908, they invented the aeroplane. Today, the fastest means of transport is the aeroplane that was invented by those two brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Wright brothers. In short, they are called the Wright brothers. So uh, we see to it, 1908, they invented the aeroplane. Today, everyone, even yourself, you wish you uh, you had boarded an aeroplane. So one day you are going to do it. Results in or the results of changes in transport and communication. What were the results in the changes in transport and communication? 
Number one, the inventions of steam engines and locomotives. It led to the distribution, even distribution of goods and resources among the people. Because now the production areas were somewhere. Now with the locomotives, when those things were produced, let's take farm produce, they were easily taken and brought to the people who were in need of those things. So there was that evenly distribution of, uh, of goods. People uh, were bringing things to where they were needed. And also it enabled the transportation. It enabled uh, the transportation of heavy goods, which could, uh, which, of which people could not manage to pull or push uh, to distant places. So we see to it that the transportation of goods was made easier. Heavy goods were now uh, transported easier, whereby people could not push them or could not carry them uh, or could not pull them, but they were pulled or pushed by uh, the machines or locomotives. And also the swift movement of locomotives protected people from goods, uh, uh, protected people and goods uh, from robbers. So, you know, Sometimes when you walk by foot, you are carrying a lot of money in five million. Sometimes you are afraid. Am I not going to meet with the robbers? But here now, when things uh, were now put in the, uh, in the locomotives, it meant that it was quite difficult for the robbers maybe uh, to get those things, to steal those things. Also, it promoted trade. It promoted trade between Europe and other continents. For instance, with their classes, uh, they wore silk, uh, muslin, and calicoes from India. So there was easy uh, communication uh, between uh, continents here. So we talk of Europe trading with, uh, with India easily here. And they were easily uh, uh, having the goods from somewhere else. And also it led to the high, to the high demand for iron and steel for building the rails, uh, engines and uh, stations. So it led to the high demand for iron and steel. And also it lessened the distance and communication barrier among the people and uh, nations. So it lessened the distance and communication barrier. Just as it is today, you can see to it that uh, people were uh, at first before the introduction of locomotives, people were traveling uh, maybe from Blantyre or maybe from Zuzu to Blantyre or from the north uh, to the south of Malawi, uh, they were taking weeks, they are still on the road. Or those who were traveling uh, down to South Africa or Zimbabwe, those who opted to travel by foot, they could travel maybe uh, two months, they are still along the way. But here you see to it that it lessened the distance uh, the transport lessened the distance. Today, uh, you can go to South Africa and come back the same day. So it means it lessened the distance and the communication barrier. And it intensified employment among uh, the people uh, in industries, ships, trains, and mines. So uh, employment was also provided in uh, better places now, in industries, in ships, in trains, and uh, in many other areas where people now were employed. Antu wazingo kutumani. Ajala kalime, ajala kuchwe manyasi, ajala katende ya nti. Ndipo antu wapuzira wandu wotu maso kwa mbili. Ndienga tisimupuzira, skuru wakuikirani haba, mukala, otumidwa.